So, welcome back for the third lecture of this week. Uh, in the last lecture, we had discussed top down and bottom up passing approach, and then finally, we came up with a dynamic programming approach of using CKY algorithm. And we converted a grammar to Chomsky normal form. So, now how once my grammar is converted to Chomsky normal form, how does CKY algorithm work? So, this is the idea. So, I will take a sentence, I have n words in my sentence. So, you will think about n plus 1 lines that are separating them starting from 0 to n. Okay. And so, once you have done that, any x i j will denote words between line i and j. And so, you, you will build up a table such that any x i j will contain all the possible non terminals that can derive words between the lines i and j. Okay. And you do that bottom up. So, so what I am saying, you have word 1, word 2, up to word n in your input string. So, we will assume some lines like 0, 1, 2, n minus 1, n. Okay. So, for example, x 0 to which words w 1, w 2 and so on. So, now what you will do? You will build up a table okay. and table will be some sort of triangular table. So, this can be 0, 1, 2. So, this element will denote x 0, 1. What are all the non terminals that derive this word between 0 and 1? Similarly, here you will write x 1, 2 and so on. Suppose, there are only 3 words. So, this is x 2, 3. Okay. So, you will write down all the non terminals that derive this. You will first fill this, then you will go next step x 0 2 x 1 3. Okay. And once you fill this, you will use x 0 3, the final one. Okay. Now, what is the, how, where are we using the fact that uh, this grammar is in C n f Chomsky normal form? I will make use of the fact that at any point this can come from only two non terminals or a single terminal. So, at this point when I am seeing at, a, at an individual word, so 0 1 will always be an individual word similarly for 1 2. So, this will come by a rule capital A goes to small a, a rule of this kind. Okay. So, I will find out all the non terms that derive this terminal. That is how I will fill the diagonal elements, the first diagonal elements. Next time this cannot come from a single terminal because they are two words. Okay. So, this has to come from two non terminals. So, I will find out if there is a rule that gives me these two non terminals and that is where I am using Chomsky normal form. Okay. So, finally, when I am here, I will see if the sentence S generates the whole sentence. So, I am caching all the possible intermediary steps here, so that I do not have to uh, do certain in and again and again. Okay. So, this is a simple home exercise. So, in the in the last lecture, we, we had given you a grammar in Chomsky normal form. Now, take the sentence, book the flight through Houston and use the CKY algorithm to find a pass tree for that. Okay. Uh, so, but what I will do? I will do an, an example in today's class also, so that it becomes you have become more much more comfortable with using CKY algorithm. So, let us take this example a pilot likes flying planes and the grammar is given to you. Okay. So, let us do that in the way I had explained. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, there are five words okay and this is the line okay 
and now you should understand how do we denote these elements. So, this is x 0 1, this will denote only the first word, this is x 1 2, x 2 3, x 3 4, x 4 5, this will be x 0 2, words between 0 to 2, x 0 3, x 0 4, x 0 5, x 1 3, x 1 4, x 1 5, x 2 4, x 2 5 and x 3 5. Now, I have to fill here what are different non terminals that fill each of the individual elements. x 0 1, what is x 0 1? My word is A. So, a pilot likes flying planes. So, is there a non terminal that derives the word A? And if you see the grammar, d t derives A. Okay? So, you can fill in d t here, d t derives a pilot n n derives pilot likes v b z derives likes flying. So, you see there are two non terminals v b g and j j they derive this and planes n n s. Okay? So, filling the diagonal element is very easy, the first diagonal element. Then you go to the next step x 0 2. Now, x 0 2 can come from x 0 1 and x 1 2, as a break up of these two points. So, is there a non terminal where or is there a rule in my grammar, when the right hand side I have d t followed by n n. And if you see your grammar, yes, n p gives me d t followed by n n. So, I can fill in n p here. x 1 3 comes from x 1 2 and x 2 3, yes. x 1 3 is pilot likes, so it comes from pilot and likes. So, any non terminal that gives me n n followed by v b z and if you see there is no non terminal. So, I will fill in empty here. Similarly, anything for v b z followed by v b g? No. Anything from v b z followed by j j? x 3 5, v b g followed by n n s? Yes. V p and j j followed by n n s n p. Okay. So, there are two possibilities here. So, fine this row is done, this diagonal is done. Now, we go to the next step. Now, how do I derive x 0 3? A pilot likes. Now, that is why I am using the Chomsky normal form. I cannot derive it as a sequence of three non terminals, because each individual non terminal can give me at most, not at most exactly two non terminals. Okay. So, what are the two places from which it can come? So, one possibility is I can break x 0 3 as x 0 1 and x 1 3, one word and two words or x 0 2, x 2 3, there are two possibilities. Okay. So, I have to check individual each of these possibilities x 0 1 x 1 3. So, x 0 1 is d t followed by null. So, this is already gone. Okay. This is not no non terminal x 0 2 is n p followed by x 2 3 is v b z. So, n p followed by v b z. Is there a non terminal where in the right hand side I have n p followed by v b z. Okay, and if you see your grammar, there is nothing. So, you, this is also null. So, here it is null. There is no non terminal that can derive a pilot likes. Okay. Now, pilot likes flying 1 to 4. So, again 1 to 4 will be 1 to 2 4 or 1 3 3 4. So, 1 to 2 4, 1 2 is an n, 2 4 is null. So, this part is null, 1 3 3 4, 1 3 is null. So, this becomes null also. 2 5 will be 2 3, 3 5 and 2 4, 4 5. So, 2 3 here is v b z and 3 5 is v p. Is there something with v b z and v p? Yes, v p. This means v b z and v p. 2 4 4 5, 2 4 is null, 
ok. So, this is my V p. Similarly, now you will go to x 0 4. Now, what are different ways in which you can break x 0 4? Now, 0 4 again you have to break it in, in a sequence of 2 non terminus. So, it can be 0 1 followed by 1 4 or 0 2 followed by 2 4 or 0 3 followed by 3 4 the 3 wedge. So, let us see 1 by 1 0 1 is d t 1 4 is null. So, this part is gone 0 2 is n p and 2 4 is null this part is also gone 0 3 is null already. So, this is null ok 1 5 1 5 can be 1 2 2 5 1 3 3 5 1 4 4 5 1 2 and 2 5 yes and n followed by a v p. So, is there something in my grammar and n followed by v p? No. So, this is gone. Similarly, 1 3 followed by 3 5, 1 3 is null ok and 1 3 is null. So, this is gone 1 4 followed by 4, 4 5, 1 4 is null. So, this is also gone, so, this is also null. Now, the only thing remains is x 0 5. Now, how can I fill x 0 5? What are different ways? So, I, let me write down here 0 5 can be 0 1 followed by 1 5. 0 2 followed by 2 5, 0 3 followed by 3 5, 0 4 followed by 4 5. Okay. 0 1 followed by 1 5, 0 1 is there, 1 5 is null, this is gone. 0 2 followed by 2 5, 0 2 is there, and 2 5 is also there, this is NP followed by VP, and this is a sentence in my grammar. So, S gives me n p v p. So, this is one possibility already. So, that means, this sentence is grammatical at least. There is one S that derives this, but are there any further uh, S. So, for that we have to look at the other possibilities 0 3 3 5 ok, this is null and 0 4 4 5 is null ok. So, fine. So, we see there I think we made one mistake here there should have been an another v p in this case ok. So, there is v p 1, v p 2 and then there will be s n p v p 1 and n p v p 2. So, yeah I will suggest that you look back in this calculation we did and see where where we made a mistake ok, but everything else is the same that we did here. So, there are two different s in which this uh, sentence can be passed two different ways. So, now once you know this I will say that use the previous uh, example. So, that is book the flight through Houston from the other grammar and try to get its pass tree. So, now in this example what we saw? there are two possibilities. So, can you think of the possibility why there are two possibilities in this case a pilot likes fly flying planes ok. So, whether he likes to fly the plane or whether he likes to see flying planes something like that. So, there are two different uh, interpretations that is why there are two different pass passage of this sentence. So, each individual pass will, will denote one particular interpretation. Now, by using this context by this CKY algorithm, find out all the possible passage using my grammar. But I have no way of saying which passage more probable than the other pass. I cannot assign some probabilities to them. Okay. So something if I have so this sentence, the man saw the dog with the telescope. It has two different interpretations in terms of two different passage. Whatever I have covered till now it cannot tell me which pass is more probable than another. So, now 
we would like to have a way in which we can assign them the probabilities that this pass is more probable than other. And for that, what we use is called probabilistic context free grammar. So, this is a simple extension of context free grammar where in addition to whatever we have seen in context free grammar, each rule is also assigned some probability. Okay. So, as you see in the formalism, it is T and S and R, they are exactly same as what we had seen in the context free grammar plus there is something called P. So, I am assigning a probability distribution over the rows and the only constraint here is that from a given non-terminal on the left hand side, the probability is generating anything should add up to 1. So, if there are 5 possibilities, if I add all the 5 possibilities, the, root, the probability for all the 5 possibilities, they should add up to 1. Okay. So, this is the constraint. So, probability in the rule gives the, gives the probability of each rule P r. So, the constraint is for all x in non-terminals, probability of x to gamma for all the possible gammas should add up to 1. Okay. So, let me give you an example. So, so this is one simple CNFG, sorry, simple PCFG in Chomsky normal form. Uh, so, so what do you see here? From S, there is only one rule, S goes to NPVP. Okay. So, because there is only one rule, it has to have a probability of 1. From, from V p, there are two rules. V p can give me V followed by N p or V p followed by P p. So, so, the constraint is that for the, the probabilities of these two rules should add up to 1. So, that is what is happening here. The first rule has a probability of 0.7, second rule has a probability of 0.3. So, these two add up to 1. Now, P p gives me P and P, only one rule with P P on the left hand side. So, this has a probability of 1. P gives me only with again probability 1. V gives me saw. This has a probability 1. Now, now these all the rules on the right hand side are starting from NP. NP can give me NP, PP or the words in lexicon like astronomers, years and so on. So, all these should add added to 1 and you can see that this actually happens. 0.4 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.68, 0 0.72, 0 0.9 and 1. So, all these probabilities are adding up to 1. So, this is the constant that is being followed. The rules have the same form as in context free grammar, but each rule has a probability. Now, how does it help? It helps in that I can now assign probabilities to each individual pass tree. So, suppose this is one pass tree. Astronomers for the sentence astronomers saw stars with ears. How do I find the probability of this pass tree? This is the pass. So, I know S gives me N P and V P. Yes, this is the first rule that I am applying. Now, H by P C F G, the probability of this rule is 1. S giving N P V P is 1. So, I have this 1 here. N P giving astronomers, deriving astronomers is probability 0.1. V P deriving V and P is probability 0.7. V giving saw is 1. N P giving N P V P is 0.4. N P giving stars is 0.18 and so on. These are the rule probability H by my grammar as my PCFG. So, what I will do? I will just multiply all these probabilities 1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.18 times 0 0.18. This is my probability of this pass tree. And if I get a second pass tree where instead of V p giving me V and P, V p is giving me V p followed by P p, I can again compute its probability by multiplying its corresponding rule probabilities and I can find the probabilities of the both the past trees individually. Okay. So, now how do I use that to compute the probability of the tree that is simply the product of the probabilities of all the rules that I use to generate this and probability of a sentence and the probability of the sentence is nothing but find out all the past trees and the probability of the individual past trees and just sum, the, sum them up. Okay. So, probability of a sentence is the sum of the probabilities of the trees that have this as the yield. That is another way of saying that those past trees are used to generate this particular string. So, in the first case, I had the sentence and there were two past trees. I can compute the probabilities of individual one. So, P t 1 and P t 2 I can find out 
and then to find the probability of the whole sentence, I just add up these two probabilities, PT1 plus PT2, and that gives me the probability of this whole sequence. Similarly, if I have another sentence like book the dinner flight and as per a different grammar, I can compute the past trees, the two past trees, compute the probability for the individual one. Okay. So, past three one here, book the dinner flight is 1.62 into 10 to the minus 6 and book the dinner flight will have a probability of 2.28 into 10 to the minus 7. So, one thing I can immediately see is that the first one pass is a more likely interpretation than the second one. Let us look at some of the features of probabilistic context free grammars. So, why we started with this formulation? So, we said that using the context free grammar given a sentence we can find out all the possible past trees, but you are not able to assign any probabilities to that. So, by using PCFG if for a given string the number of past trees are increasing I can also assign the probabilities for each individual past tree. So, that gives me some plausibility which past tree is more probable than the other one for the given string. So, this is important, but at the same time we should understand that although by using PCFG I can compute what is the probability of the sentence by taking all the past, past trees, taking the individual probabilities and adding them up. This is this does not give me a very good uh, plausibility of the sentence. Okay. This is only looking at the structural factors not some lexical coherence. So, in general to find the probability of the sentence you would prefer to use language model than a PCFG. PCFG is good only for finding the probability of a pass tree, which pass tree is more probable than another one. Yes, if the it it helps in some cases like in real text you might find some grammatical mistakes. So, PCFG will allow that, but will give you a very very low probability. So, in one case you can also probably find out which sentence has some grammatical mistake if the PCFG is giving it low probability. And yeah, this is something that I said earlier. So, in practice, this is not good for modeling the probability of the sentence. Okay. Language model is much better than PCFG. So, why is that the case? So, a simple example is if we have the same sentence, I have two different trees, one is smaller than the other, the smaller tree will always have a higher probability than the larger one because all the probabilities are less than one, and for a larger tree, you are multiplying the probabilities. Okay. So, yeah, the takeaway here is that so you use PCFG to find out what what are all the probabilities for different past trees for a sentence okay, and, and try to choose the best one. So, now uh, once we have this formulation of PCFG, there are some interesting questions that we would like to explore using that. So, suppose I am given a sentence W1M, okay, I am given a grammar G and there are various past trees T is one of those. So, what is the most likely pass for this sentence given the grammar? So, which pass tree T gives me this maximum probability, argmax of probability given this sentence and the grammar. Okay. Then what is the probability of the sentence? Probability of the sentence given my grammar. And then finally, how do we learn the rule probabilities of my grammar G. These are the other three interesting questions that we would like to answer in the next lectures. So, for example, how do I find the most likely pass of a of a sentence? So, one simple solution is find out all the possible trees and take the one with the highest probability, but is there any efficient manner method for doing that? What is the probability of a sentence? Again, I can find out probabilities of the individual pass trees, add them up this gives me the probability of the sentence, but can I do it by exhaustively enumerating all that and adding it or is there some other method. And finally, there is some interesting question that how do I learn the rule probabilities in the grammar G and the answer to this will be similar to what we saw in the case of uh, hidden Markov models. So, there are so there are there will be again two ways of learning the, the parameters, one will be when the I am given the corpus and some labeled past trees, I can use them to find the probabilities. Another scenario where I am given the corpus, but not 
the past tree. I am only given the grammar. Grammar in the sense CFG, not the rule probabilities. Then how do I learn the parameters? So this will be again very, very interesting topic. And there you can use some ideas where that I had shown earlier for the uh, bomb wesh algorithm. So in the next lecture, we will start trying to answer some of these questions. Thank you.